can do it. I'm 55. I, I don't want to wait till I'm 60 to start painting. Mm -hmm. So I jumped in, at, you know, and I, um, I had several friends that were uh, trained artists that went to art school. Mm -hmm. Many, actually a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. And none of them were doing any art. None. Zero. And uh, they were blocked. You ever heard of blocked artists? Have you heard of that term? Blocked means they just, they just can't create anything. They go, but they just can't paint anything, right? They just, so or like a writer's block. You've heard of writer's block? You yes, sit down yes, to yes. write, but mm -hmm. nothing comes out. There's nothing there. But there's a podcast saying the opposite. There's no such thing as a writer's block. Uh, <laughs> if you are given a deadline to do right. certain things, right. you, you got to meet the deadline. You have to write a, right. uh, like a five-page report. You would do it because uh, yeah. there's no such thing. They say it's just a <laughs> oh, that's good. Procrastinate. Yeah, it could be. Well, whatever it is, yes. that thing. Mm -hmm. If there's no deadline or whatever, I had many friends that were just not doing any art. And they were trained. They spent lots of money for art school. Mm -hmm. Went to art school. Yeah. And so I decided I would read all I could about being blocked before I even started to paint. <clears throat> so I, I wanted to become unblocked. Because I don't have time. If I got blocked for 10 years, I'd be, what, I'd be 70. And that's way too late, you know? So I don't have time to be blocked. So, mm -hmm. I, so I, started, I read all about being blocked before I started painting. And I found this author named Julia Cameron. She wrote the book The Artist's Way, and also wrote a. Oh, I heard about that. Oh, it's must reading, and okay. also uh, The Vein of Gold is her other book. What is it? The Vein oh. of Gold, like a vein. Okay. The Vein of Gold, or a gold vein, you know, running through. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and uh, actually, it was the book that I spent most of my time in was was The Vein of Gold, mm -hmm. and she takes you on a three-month journey. Okay. Uh, and she says, it, it's very similar. Whatever you do, don't think. Just do what I tell you for three months. And so every morning, I, I would read and I would, um, I would, and you journal. You do lots of journaling, writing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can give you this information. We have it. Okay. So, I was just looking for <laughs> some have it, right? Yeah, or just email Cricket. She'll, she'll okay. tell you the books. And you can always find them at used bookstores. Mm -hmm. People go through them or they don't read them. But, mm -hmm. but the, it was the vein of gold. But anyway, so I did that for an hour before work every morning. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was two hours, at least two hours every night for three nights for, and, and, and all my weekends for three months. Because I was exploring this and I, and I wanted to really get to a place where I wouldn't be blocked, right? Mm -hmm. And so she has you write and journal and uh, write down your th questions about art and things. You know, you feel like a failure. This is a stupid painting. Or you work through that bad experiences, but you write about those. Mm -hmm. And then, as part of the exercise, she has you write down. Um, you write for one hour about each five-hour, I mean five-year segment of your life. So everything you can remember about year one to five, you just write for an hour. The next night, you write everything from year five to year ten. You write just just write write write. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you do that until you're at your present age. But then she has to go back and do a piece of art for each one of those segments of time. So you do a piece of art for ages one to five. It could be a drawing, it could make it could be making a doll, it could be any anything you want to do. You can just put color, you can just you know, I just did stick figures and stuff because mm -hmm. I didn't know how to paint and all that, right? And so you do that. And so it, you know, that took an equal amount of time. So that's fifty five, so what was that? Ten it was eleven days, I guess, of, of of writing that 11 days of painting and then and here's, here's the amazing thing and then what, what she had me did this is where this is where everything changed for me and that is you put all those paintings on the floor and for me I got up on my countertop in my kitchen and you look down on that and you're looking at time but you're not seeing a timeline it's all happening now at the same time Oh, because you just spread it, it over. Yeah it'd be like it would be like the, I don't know if you don't believe in God but it'd be the way a timeless God would look at it. And suddenly I would I would see similar like I had a very bad relationship with my father right and um, but what I saw there was you know very a very difficult situation with him him leaving but I was surrounded by 14 other men and I never I never put that together and it's almost like God got rid of the bad guy or the guy that was struggling and put these 14 very generous teachers coaches. You know, I think there's uh, there's a Navy chaplain in there when I was in the Coast Guard. You know, and these men that took me under their wing and gave me the pieces that I needed to. It, but I but I couldn't see that. But then I began to think, oh my. But yeah, but but then I got to see, oh my gosh, there is a bigger picture. It's much bigger than me. And so then I could relax a little bit. That this whole thing's under control. And maybe my desires to paint and these things are okay. Maybe they're yeah, they're part of a bigger plan. 
And so part of that, though, is that you begin to do a little piece of art every day. You just do something, just a sketch or whatever. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'd go to bed, oh, I got to do my little thing, you know. And so I got in the habit of doing some kind of little artsy thing every day, something very small. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did that. But while I was doing that, I ran in, into some other artists, uh, people that were trying to do art, struggling, you know. And uh, I would, I, I was already painting every night anyways. About this time I met Cricket, who had, in her previous marriage, had been married to a, an artist. Mm -hmm. and so she understood the art thing. We, we just became very, very good friends. Mm -hmm. And, um, and she, she came to my house and all these other people just started showing up at my house on Monday nights. I'd say, come on over, paint. So we'd listen to music, we would drink wine, and we would paint. Often until after midnight. They'd come over about 7, 8 o'clock, and they'd bring music instruments. And so we'd do that, we'd paint, and we'd just create. And, and then we'd play music until 2, 3 in the morning. Of course, it's hard to go to work on Tuesday, but it was well worth it, right? I mean, oh my gosh, it was just this energy thing that began to happen there. And um, what, but what also started happening is blocked artists started coming. Trained trained artists that had been trained, but they were blocked. They began they began to show up at my house, and they would come and they'd tell us we were doing it wrong. And, you gotta do this. You gotta do this. And but we had a rule: you don't get to criticize anybody else's art. You can come, you can sit, but you can't. You can't. There's no criticism. There's no correcting anybody because all art, and we learned this from Julia's book, all art is good art. There's there's no bad art. None of your paintings are bad. Because it's just a self-expression. It is that expression. So you uh, criticize somebody else's uh, well, uh, spirit. Right. Then. Depending on what school they went to, they'll criticize. Well, that's that's, that's a piece of poop, you know, that kind of thing. And, um, and that's not true. So we did that. But what happened is these artists, uh, gosh, we had a gallery owner. We had several other people that were trained artists that just started showing up. That were, that were doing nothing with their art. The gallery owner had never, he had done nothing for three years. Uh -huh. So he came over, and people began to get their vision back. It, you know, it's like a movie you'd see where guys play professional baseball, and, they, and then they quit, they run away, you know, and they start playing sandlot with some kids, and they remember the fun and the joy of it, right? So these guys started coming back, and they all started painting. So you started this? Yeah. Well, I, I, it was bigger than me, right? I no, was I just, don't know. No, in the beginning. Yes. You decided, mm -hmm. okay, yes. let's just yeah. get together. From zero. I would just invite, because I was already doing it. Just come to my house and do this with me. And so, um, yeah, so it became quite large. We'd have maybe 40 people at my house sometimes. We'd have to, we had to go into another room and set up big tables. We had the, you know, place pretty much wired for sound and uh, everybody bring their own wine or their beer or whatever, you know, it was just, it was fantastic. Still going? It was fantastic. No, well, things changed. Now, he, now what, <laughs> oh, because this is, it's yeah, life. No, that's fine, yeah, and there are chapters, right? So that was, that was the initial chapter. Well, then the story continues is these trained artists, because I would paint everything and all things and all different styles, and they would say, John, you need to find your voice. I didn't even know what that was. Your, your, your brand. Whatever, yeah, your brand or whatever, but I, I, I had no idea. Cricket didn't really know. We had an idea, so we thought, hmm, how can I find my voice? And um, so we thought, well, let's go to the heart of art. So we did a three-month trip, we went over to Europe, and we went to uh, spend time, and we spent a month in Paris, and in, in Italy and Ireland, and um, but we did. Um, well, we looked at all the all the greats, and we and we talked to artists. We went into galleries and talked to gallery owners, and um, you know, and just to get their feedback and information. And when we were in Paris, there was an, an, a street artist by the name of Marcel Arnold, and he had he had painted them in Montmartre. You know where that was? That's where the Impressionists painted at the turn of the century. Well, he painted there for 40 years on the streets. And, oh, and, right, and we stayed, and we, and, 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 and yeah, I know it was. We got goosebumps because this guy, we were just, we were in the little town where Vincent Van Gogh passed away, and Theo, you know, they're buried there. We were in the town just looking for a place to stay. We were doing this very inexpensively, right? We were doing, we were doing like, yeah, we we're doing couch surfing and just doing it very cheap. Oh, well, you should. You should. The clock's ticking, right? I mean, so it's time to do this stuff. But we're there. But this guy, for no reason that we can figure out, except serendipity, something bigger, right, took us under his wing. And I became, it was, and I became, he became like a mentor to us and told us about art. He told us, he brought us into these places where there, uh, I don't know how much I can say. I'll just say that there are artists uh, underground and maybe even illegally in the country creating their art from other countries and stuff like that and, the, and and their and their art was very very well known I mean very very well known okay so we would do that so he would take us I got someone I want you to meet you know and we get up we get up very early he'd be down at our window he goes 
<laughs> he goes, goes, Johnny, Johnny, you must come with me. You must come with me. You know, we'd open the shutters, and so we'd run down and come with me. And so we'd go, and, you know, and we'd have wine and toast with, you know, these different artists in the, in the, in the early morning. And uh, so we would do that. And then, uh, plus, we would go and we'd take the train into Paris every day. And we'd look at art, and then we'd come home, we'd sketch people on the train on the way back, and then we'd paint until we just until we couldn't stay up anymore. And then we'd sleep in and we'd get up and do it again, go back into Paris, oh take in the... So we did... We did yeah. <laughs> so we did that for a month. And, uh, and again, it was, it was very much life-changing. And then we did the same. Then we went down to Italy and looked at more art and uh, went into some areas that we both found quite beautiful down there. And, um, and then we went to uh, Ireland, and we, Cricket's a writer, and so she always wanted to write in a little cottage on the north coast, you know, on the, on the Atlantic coast. And so she did that, and I would go out and paint in the bad weather, which was something new to me, and it's where I established my style, was on the, um, the uh, North Atlantic um, in Ireland. There's no trees, it's nothing but very, very cold. And I would go out and paint, but I learned about painting in cold weather. And, and, and the style that I have that people buy is a, is a style that I developed in cold. I have to paint it in very cold weather. I can't use brushes because they freeze. I have to use scrapers. And, but I developed the whole style while I was in Ireland. Really? Yeah. So, so just honoring and nurturing her needs, in turn, you discovered your voice. Yes.